Welcome back, everyone. We are here live at the Cleveland Racquet Club, where I am sitting with our finalists for the men's doubles here at the 2021 Cleveland Open, Evan King and Hunt Reese. Guys, congratulations on the result. I feel like I asked the first question to Evan after the match, so this time I'm going to go first question to Hunter. It was a straight set victory for you guys today. That second set got really tricky. Ultimately, what helped you guys get through the finish line? Um, I would say experience, just playing playing with the same guy. I mean, Evan and I have, have played a lot together, so that, that helps in matches like that. Um, yeah, I, I, I served well. I think we both played really solid. We helped each other out. Evan made some really good moves on my serve, um, which is something that we've worked on as a team. So, yeah, I think just stuff like that paying off in, in big moments is, is key. Mm-hmm. And watching you guys uh, play all week long, I feel like you guys really commu- you know, really focused in on your communication. In particular, it felt like the communication's about the returns, where you're playing your return, what the net person is doing after that return is hit. I guess more speaking more broadly, Evan, how important is communication uh, to success on a doubles court? Oh, it's massive. I think communication paired with chemistry, as he was saying. So, I mean, he tried trust me to get a return down and then he can do what he does the best at the net and if he knows where it's going he can shift in the proper spots like we can plan it out we had a great training week last week together where we worked on like a lot of specific things that have come up in these matches so then in big opportunities like there's no panic we more or less know what each other's going to do and yeah I mean it's been communicated it's been hammered home and we stick to the plan then comes out looking good on game day no it absolutely does look good and you know to a point uh we've talked with a bunch of players here in this booth and uh talking to players just casually throughout the week uh finding your rhythm here in 2021 it sounds like that's something that's been difficult for anyone to do hunter i'll go to you next i know you were in europe in asia i believe to start the season now you're back here in the states first challenger in the states of the year which is crazy to think about but with all the travel with all the uncertainty how difficult is it to find your rhythm right now um yeah i think once we're once we're at tournaments it's uh it's not too different i think um you know we're able to practice with each other like the there's i don't know once you're there it's kind of feels like any other tournament i mean guys are wearing masks and and you know we're doing all the safety things but um i would say it's in it's in kind of the off weeks and figuring out that and you know travel is a little trickier now if you're flying overseas you need a negative test within 72 hours of the flight and um, but then you also need a negative test to get on site after Thursday. But if you're flying on Friday, now you need two negative tests before you. So you have to time that, you know, it, it makes a lot of, uh, there's a lot of like little things that, that are trickier um, due to the times. But, uh, but I would say once, we're, once you're on site at a tournament, um, yeah, it's kind of up to you. I mean, you, you still have access to practice courts. We still have a physio gym, like you can you can kind of turn it into just another tournament and i think um i think you're seeing a lot of guys have success you know with that mindset of like okay well, i'm just here to do my job so mm-hmm. yeah yeah and uh you know for you guys obviously uh your pairing is it's working it's seventh final for the two of you as a duo and you know just fun fact for you both 49th career doubles final evan that's a wow. freaking awesome number 30th for you, Hunter, not too bad yourself. That's crazy. Uh, you know, I bet I've only won like fifteen. I don't know. Yeah, I, like, I wasn't going to get into the title counts, but it's. Yeah, I feel uh, like yeah, it's not that good. Slightly are, under five hundred, I okay. think. Yeah, I think. I think you're slightly above, but okay. I think. But I'm sorry. the loser. Well, on the team, Wolverines, right? we're always slightly above. But <laughs> anyways, right. yes, hey, yeah, I like that talk. That yeah, talk. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm, smack talks half the game here. But For sure. uh, again, she, you both, you both have had success with a bunch of different partners throughout your careers. That's why I bring that number up. And yet, you know, watching you guys play, it does feel like the chemistry is there. It does feel like you guys are clicking. So, Evan, question to you: What is it about Hunter's game uh, that perhaps brings out the best for you and brings out your best performances here? Um. I would say before we even talk about game, like we're good buddies. So, I mean, he knows when I'm not at my competitive best. I know when he's not at his competitive best. And I think we can balance each other out, make sure that we're both at a place where we're successful. And I think we both listen to each other. Like we play completely different game styles of tennis, of singles and doubles. Mm -hmm. And we also see the game, I think, similarly but differently. And I think we do a really good job of problem solving. Mm -hmm. So I think... Like you were saying before, like the communication in that aspect is something that makes us very good as a tandem. And then, yeah, like like he's got the net stuff down. I need to work on the net stuff. I got the return stuff down. He's returning on real this tournament, but sometimes he doesn't return as well. Like it's a good balance of 
I don't know, yin and yang. Like, we're, we're doing our thing pretty no, well. No, completely fair. Now, for me, I'm used to seeing it be Hunter Reese and Mikhail Labidis. Like, that mm-hmm. that was the team to me. I probably butchered that tough shoes name. to fill, man. Yeah, I know. that, And that's like a power <laughs> yeah. player. That was like the per, that was the hand-in-the-glove fit that's uh, for you, Hunter. But, yeah, and I see you're, you're not disagreeing uh, completely. Yeah. Yeah. Dude was good. <laughs> <laughs> Kick a play. For sure. But same question to you. Again, what is it about? Because clearly, again, it, it does seem like the chemistry works. Yeah, um, yeah, no, I would echo everything Evan said. Um, you know, with with we we get along well. I mean, I think we both enjoy traveling, which is huge. So we we kind of like plan trips other places. Like we're not stuck in the states. We don't mind grinding a little bit. Like we, we kind of view the world in, in that sense the same way. Like this is a cool opportunity for us to experience the world. Like this this you know professional life that we're living. So um, so that's a big plus. And and yeah, we're just good buddies. And then on court. <clears throat> like specifically with tennis um yeah he, he's got everything kind of i'm looking for in a partner um yeah i want something somebody that's a solid returner and uh kind of takes a little bit of pressure off me because i just know that when the point goes to his side like we're we're good like they have to hit a really good serve to get it by him or what we're gonna be we're gonna be putting pressure on so so i don't feel like i have to make every return and that really frees me up um you know he's lefty which is which is a big plus it helps me out at the net because um yeah it, it guys can't not can't, but don't often take as big of a cuts on, on a normal guy. So or on a righty. So, um, so I'm able to be, you know, way more active and yeah, we just, I think we complement each other extremely well. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, but to add on to what he said about seeing the world, like Cleveland wasn't our plan a like <laughs> yeah. at all. Like we were meant to go from Singapore to Kazakhstan and we were going to take, I think these weeks off, but I mean, COVID jacked up prices makes travel crazy. We were going to play together in France, and then they had entry restrictions if you were, like, coming in not from the EU, which freaked me out. And then it's just, man, it's wild, man. Yeah, no, and, again, the fact that you guys have hey, found your clear. rhythm here uh, this week clearly yeah, is tennis working. in the land. Yeah, yeah, well, then, to stick with the theme of – yeah, tennis in the land. Thank you. But Rest to stick brand. with – Yeah, always, always. I appreciate that. Always on gear. Uh, but to stick with the theme of tactics because I feel like I can get nerdy without feeling too embarrassed in front of you guys. <laughs> Easily. Lefty, add side. Forehands on the outside. Righty, do side. Weird, Forehands right? Side. Yeah, it is weird. So yeah. what led to that decision? Is it a return thing? What? Why go – I feel like normally in doubles you want forehands in for the poach at least when in 2017 and he may not remember this when evan king was coaching the university of michigan club tennis team that's what he was telling us his work to poach man as we were getting oh, prepared yeah, for so sure. four hands outside why why is that decision um yeah I don't, i'll jump in if you have yeah, something. so um we actually played the other way around like until yeah last year bef- like we played like one tournament like this pre-covid um, and, and my whole life I've played outside. So that was just like a thing yeah. I, And like, he, he was actually the one that brought it up at first. He's like, we like, maybe we should try this. And so kind of the thought process was, um, was to make me a little bit more comfortable on the return. So it's a little bit easier for me to lob because typically I'm going to be lobbing over a righty's backhand. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and also like I can come across the forehand a little bit more so I can swing a little bit freer as opposed to feeling like I have to like get the ball inside out. Uh, so that was kind of the, probably the two driving factors, but to your point about the poaching, um, I actually find it easier to cross on my backhand volley. I, I don't have quite as much reach, but it's easier for me to cross and, and still cover. Like if they go behind me, still cover with this, than if I'm moving this way and have to shift and play a backhand volley behind me. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that it's kind of always been the case for me and so around the net, like as far as poaching, like a hundred percent, he was right. Like always looking to set up the poach. Um, if the ball gets down, like crowd the middle, all that good stuff. Um, but I actually do find it easier to, I guess, be more of a presence when I'm moving to my backhand and can s- kind of swat at the forehand. Yeah than uh, the other way around. Last two questions for you guys. I promise. Uh, tomorrow, good, it's Lawson and Galloway. Mm-hmm. You guys have probably played with both of them, if not seen them at millions of tournaments. At this point, do you even watch the film on them, or is it just, hey, let's rest up, let's get ready to go tomorrow? I lost to him earlier this year with Pasha mm-hmm. in three sets, like 10-5, 10-4 in the third or something like that. So I think I have a general idea of them as a team. I mean, I've played Rob a billion times. Yeah. We as a team have played Rob a billion times. I've actually only played Lawson maybe like two times. 
Um, but I, I mean, like played, I'm not going to watch the film. I feel like yeah, I feel like you played Galloway and Lamins. <laughs> yeah, we did. In 2019. Yeah, we so did. We, we yeah, lost like yeah. 15, 13, or something. Yeah, like I remember that. that. I don't not remember to that. bring it up. No. Though, that <laughs> yeah, sorry, that one's on me. I don't know. I don't We're know, playing different sides though. It's I don't know what different match. Never happened. Yeah, completely different match. Now, well then, my final question to the two of you and. In case it hasn't been made abundantly clear, I am also University of Michigan Wolverine, as always. Hail Go Blue. To the and victors, <laughs> Hail exactly. to the And What's on up? that note, we just knocked off Ohio State for the first time That's since right, 2001. We did. Damn straight we That's did. That's right. Now, in 2001, I was not yet potty trained. But in 2001, <laughs> you know, you were probably already a junior Easter Bowl champion, Evan. Uh, what that that win, far, what yeah. does that win, though, mean to you? Mo. I am so <laughs> fired up about that. Um because I mean, as you know, like the rivalry in all sports is it's real. Like it's it's real. The hatred <laughs> is real. Like I have played a tournament in Columbus during football weekend, and in the facility they would block off like the Michigan flag. They'd X out everything. They call us like that state up north or whatever they call us. Like we don't like them. We kind of like degrade them. Like all this kind of stuff. So, I mean, in my four years playing, we honestly didn't get close. And a lot of the reason I went to Michigan in the first place was try to, like, get him over a hump. And I wasn't successful in, with it. I think Steiny has done a phenomenal job changing the culture of the team and, and getting a bunch of guys that walk in there from 1 through 6 to 7 through 10, just know a role, get fired up, and believe that they can go and win that match. And that's something that my team's never had. So, I mean, there's a reason why they won since, yeah, 2001. But, yo, we're good. I know. We're good. That's Wait, the man. crazy part. Let me jump but you know it. who's really good? T- Tennessee. Yeah, go balls. Tennessee. T- yeah. tell, them, tell them that history fact you learned last week about what? Ohio and Michigan. About, about the war of uh, Toledo. Oh, yeah. Toledo. I had That's no it. idea about that. <laughs> yeah. Like that, like no, that hatred runs Toledo. deep. It was ours. Yeah, and then Ohio was like, "We'll take it." Yeah, yeah, but you got the Upper Peninsula. Yeah, it's which, which is a terrible fun fact. <laughs> fun fact: Highway 41 goes from Miami to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, <laughs> <laughs> and it crosses the Mackinac Bridge. There we go. We're full circle here. Wild. But, uh, again, last one, same version of you, Hunter, cool. because Tennessee's really good. Yeah, and I know I'm sure having that base in Knoxville to train out of, and I know there's a Knoxville Challenger every year as well, and I'm sure you get to go down there and play it. How close are you still with the team? And I, I know I've seen Evan around Ann Arbor, but do you mm-hmm. still get to train down there from time to time? Um, yeah, I do. I mean, when, I, when I'm in town, I do uh, I do train with them. It's been tricky with COVID, so I actually haven't gotten to hit with them um, since the start of the school year. Uh, so as far as this team goes, I only know the guys that have been around for a little while. But, we, I, I mean, we've got some freshmen that are ballers. Um, that Monday kid is – He can play. Yeah, he's yeah. tearing it up. You got a kid named Monday? Yeah, Johannes, Johannes Monday. Yeah. That's hard. Or Johannes. I don't know what. Yeah. I respect that. Yeah, it's British kid. He's fire. Yeah, and um, yeah, I think I think the key, um, just from talking to the guys, because I do stay in touch with them, is the depth. I mean, the, the team is so deep. We got guys. We've got guys not traveling that would legitimately play. You know, top three and four at other SEC schools. So, um, yeah, I think everyone's bought in. Everyone's loving that. They're they're along for the ride. I mean, it's such a cool experience to have. You know, a legitimate shot at a. You know, it's something special, SEC, a, a tournament title. So, um, yeah, I mean, yeah. we've all for life over here, yeah, so absolutely. I'm pulling for him. I'm glad I walked into the workout room. I got my room. orange undies on. Yeah, at the double tree because <laughs> Coach McKay, I told you, sent yeah. me some gear, and I had the long sleeve Tennessee up top. I had the Michigan shorts on bottom. I was Team King Reese. Uh, so, so, you know, I've been repping you guys from the beginning. But, uh, obviously, again, congratulations. I've got a story for Evan about a time I saw him and Seku Bangora at Charlie's that we're going to save for off <laughs> mic. Yeah, he'd like that one. But we'll save that for off mic. But, again, congratulations to the both of you on the victory and good luck at tomorrow's final. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank <laughs> go you. Blue. Yeah, go blue. <laughs> Thank you.